Hello, everybody. How are you all doing tonight? My name is Lanny Shaughnessy, and welcome to Spindle TV. I'll be your host this evening, just like every Tuesday night. Uh, tonight, we are going to be discussing the fourth axis. Um, rotary jobs. We're going to be designing rotary jobs and everything uh, inside... Uh, Vetric Aspire. We're going to be working as Aspire this evening. And uh, we'll talk about Pro too, because we can do fourth axis and rotary projects in Pro and all. But I want to design something tonight while we're doing a Q&A, while we're doing a live Q&A. Uh, I want to um, take you guys and girls uh, questions and answer them. Uh, at the same time, I want to discuss and kind of design a fourth axis project or look at fourth axis projects and rotary projects and things. Uh, that was a requested topic uh, that, uh, you know, some of the people had was fourth axis stuff and rotary stuff. And it, of course, this isn't going to apply to everybody because not everybody has a fourth axis, but we're going to be doing some designing in there. So different ways of creating vectors and, and uh, you know, laying out a design and stuff may, you know, um, be of interest to you. You never know. Right. So. Uh, you can stick around. Hopefully you do. Uh, if you don't, completely understand if it's not your topic for the evening. Um, and, uh, you know, just because I'm working in Aspire, because I am going to do some modeling on this fourth axis, uh, we're going to be talking about the Vetric VCAR projects, uh, products as well, you know, desktop and pro, because we can do fourth axis and rotary projects in them as well. We're limited as far as the 3D stuff. You know, we can work with existing 3D models to import and things. Uh, and uh, the process is pretty much the same as, you know, with Aspire. But if it, when it comes to actually creating 3D models, you know, of course, that's the Aspire software. So we're going to be, you know, working in Aspire tonight. Uh, but we'll we'll be jumping around. And if you can stick around uh, and uh, at least join in in the Q&A, you know, ask your questions. I'll answer them to the best of my ability. Uh, that would be awesome. That would make a fun, eventful evening and everything. And um, if you have questions, go ahead and, you know, start typing them in and we'll get this ball a rolling. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's my long winded introduction. How you doing? Um, Rodney Roberts, sorry to hear that you're without power, but thanks for sticking with us and joining us on your phone, man. That's pretty awesome. Uh, hopefully you get power back soon because uh, I know that sucks. We're here in Florida. And, um, you know, it rains all the time and storms and power outages and stuff. So I can totally relate. But uh, hopefully you get some power back uh, over there in your area and your neck of the woods in Iowa. And, uh, you know, but thanks for, you know, you know, using that phone data to join <laughs> or, or your or your Internet or whatever. But thanks. I appreciate you. I appreciate all you. Um, and so. Uh, uh, I want to say hello to Michael. Michael said hello. Hello. Thanks, Crystal, for letting me know that. Michael, how you doing, buddy? Michael, if y'all don't know from last videos and last few videos and stuff, Michael is my youngest viewer that I believe. And uh, Crystal will correct me if I'm wrong. Crystal or Steven will correct me if I'm wrong. But I believe Michael is five. How old are you, Michael? Tell me how old you are. Hold up your fingers in front of the TV and tell me how old you are. And uh, mommy, wink, wink. Kind of tell me how old he is, right? Okay, all right. So, um, that way I can pretend like I saw his fingers. <laughs> all right, well, let's get on into it. Uh, let's see what we got here. We are going to be working in Vetric V Carb, uh, Vetric Aspire tonight. Sorry, not V Carb, Vetric Aspire tonight for a little while. We'll, we'll jump back and forth, uh, as we're asking that QA and everything. And, uh, yep, Michael is five years old. Thanks for joining me tonight, Michael. I appreciate you staying up past your bedtime and hanging out with me. Um, now, I know my screen is small and some of the things I don't know. Actually, I'm, I've got, let me see here. Uh, let me look over on my screen, uh, my other screen, and see, yeah, see the content's a little blurry. looks blurry, right? And every time I go to blow up, you know, uh, my my preview things start to slow down. I'm going to do that again tonight for you folks. I'm going to change my resolution. So it's nice and big and everything for you. Um, hopefully it doesn't slow it down and I'm waiting. Oh, I hope they get my computer built soon so I can get it in here. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Uh, 
let's change our resolution. Ooh. All right. Uh, and uh, let's get out of that infinity loop there. There we go. All right. Let's get back to Aspire. There we go. Nice and big. Things are a little bit clearer. Uh, for us and all that wonderful jazz. All right. Well, um, I've got my, uh, I've got, I've got a preview of the what you guys and girl are, girls are seeing. There's a little bit of a delay between what I'm saying and what you're hearing. Uh, so uh, cool for that. Um, we are going to create a new file now. I'm going to be building a model. Uh, so I, I'm going to hold down the shift key while I click on create a new file. So that way I get those hidden features in the job setup, uh, specifically down here in the model resolution. I get those additional options, uh, for more pixels and things. And when you're building a model, uh, I would highly recommend when you're building a model from scratch or from your own design or whatever, uh, I would highly recommend working in a high resolution because many of you may or may not be aware, but the pixelation that's in the model translates to the quality of the cut. So if we're using a low resolution uh, in our model resolution, when we're building that model and everything, that pixelation that could occur in that model will actually translate to the quality of the cut. So we want a high resolution. Now I very rarely go into the maximum resolution uh, which is like 16 million pixels. I usually stick around the extremely high. Uh, it is a lot of processing on that CPU and with everything else that I've got going on, I'm hoping that working in a high resolution is not going to slow me down. Not going to slow me down. All right. Uh, so my rotary project uh, tonight is going to be 29 inches in length. I'm going to start out with six inches in diameter, a six inch cylinder. And uh, I'm going to be working off the cylinder axis for the Z0 position, starting at the bottom left. And I'm rotating my Y values along my X axis. Um, so that's how it is for the DWC 2440 that I have. So that's what I'm going to be doing. And uh, I'm going to be working in an extremely high resolution, which we just talked about. I'm going to click OK. And we are off. All right. Um, so there we go. Now, when we create a rotary job, it kind of gives us already some layers uh, in here. It gives us a zero plane layer, our original layer one. It gives us some two rail sweep rails, uh, these blue rails that are on both sides here, uh, and then a bounding box um, layer and stuff. Uh, so cool for that. We're not going to use them, but uh, they're there. <laughs> All right. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to import a 3D model, right? And this can be done, look at my face, this can be done in Desktop Pro and Aspire when you're importing a 3D model, uh, and um, uh, whether it be a rotary model or a flat model, and the steps are the same. So, follow along. All right, cool. Okay, so uh, we're going to go into our modeling tab and we're going to import a component or 3D model. Um, <clears throat> and I'm going to come down here to number 25. That's the one I chose for tonight. And the reason why I chose number 25 for tonight is I'm going to actually attempt to redraw it and redesign it from scratch. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, I want to see if, um, you know, how close I can come just by design. Like if I want to design my own from scratch, uh, you know, how I, I'm going to show you how to do it, right? While we're answering questions and stuff. Now, this is going to be a full 3D model. Uh, and um, let's, let's take a minute here. Uh, let's, let's, take a quick minute here and let me talk to you about the difference because some of you might be new, right? Uh, so let's discuss the difference between 2D, 2.5D, and 3D when it comes to CNC machine, right? Or, or, or the best way to think of it. Um, 
let's say that I am doing a profile or a pocket cut. Uh, let's say I'm cutting a pocket or you know profile a half inch deep. And my bit is going to uh, take certain passes, you know, let's say an eighth of an inch per pass. Um, when your bit on your CNC, when you come down to that depth and it remains at that depth through that entire cut until it goes to the next step and remains at that depth through the entire cut, that is classified as a 2D cut. Okay. Two dimensional cut. Um, a two and a half D and 3D cut, that 3D category and two and a half D falls in that. And I'll tell you the difference between those two in a second. But when my Z is coming down, when I'm doing a 3D model and everything or, or a 3D cut, let's forget the word model. When I'm doing a 3D cut, my Z axis is constantly moving up and down during that cut, right? You know, it's following the contours or that cut, right? So that's, that's a 3D uh, cut. Now, believe it or not, a V carved tool path falls into the category of a 3D cut uh, because of the fact that we have different depths of our V cuts, depending on the space between the lines. You know, we have shallow cuts and deep cuts to create that 3D design. And our Z is constantly moving up and down, you know, during that cut. And so it falls into the 3D category, right? Technically two and a half D category. All right. Three-dimensional, you and I as human beings and everything in this world, uh, this mouse and all that wonderful stuff, those are three-dimensional items, 360 degrees around, three-dimensional items, 3D. Um, a two-and-a-half-D cut is a 3D model that doesn't have any overlapping uh, areas that can be wrapped uh, around. Uh, so it's a flat carving, and unfortunately, I don't have <laughs> – I wish I had a 3D or a two-and-a-half-D model, but um, – uh, let's, uh, let's, we'll use the Vetric as an example here. Um, we'll come back and re-import this, but let me just click okay for, oops, hold on. Let me, uh, size this down. Diameter, four inches. Uh, the length, 29 inches. Resize the material block. And we'll talk about this. We're going to come back to this, but I just want to show this here. Uh, come on. Okay. Now this model right now in its current state is a 3d model, right? A 3d model. Uh, and, uh, in this state here, it's still a 3d model but it would technically be classified as two and a half D because it's flat, right? It doesn't wrap around 360 degrees. It's flat. It's still three dimensional because, you know, our Z is moving up and down while it's carving. It's still a 3D cut, but it's considered two and a half D because it's flat, right? Okay. Just wanted to share that with you, what the difference between 2D is, 2.5D, and, and 3D when it comes to the terms of CNC. When that Z-axis comes down and it remains at the same depth throughout the whole cut, you know, it's still making passes. That's fine, but it's remaining that depth. It doesn't move up and down, um, you know, during that cut. That is a 2D cut. 2.5D means that the 3D model is flat, doesn't wrap around. Uh, there's no overhanging elements, uh, you know, to wrap and things. Uh, and then a 3D model is 360 degrees around. Okay. All right. You guys learned something today. Okay. You probably already knew that, but I figured I would share that with you. All right. Let's uh, delete this model <clears throat> and let's bring it in again so we can actually talk about uh, what we wanted to talk about here. So we're going to import that model again. Let's get down to number 25. All right. When you import a three-dimensional model, a uh, 3D model, when, whether it is uh, STL, OBJ, PRJ, and all the other different file formats, Vetric, you know, dot uh, V3M, uh, dot uh, 3D clip, and things like that, we have to orientate that 3D model within our material. Um, now, if I were to orientate this as a flat model, then, uh, you know, I would have to spin this around. If you look very closely here, there's a little red box right there, right? That's my material, right? That's my 29 by, you know, six uh, diameter material. 
uh, right there. And, um, you know, I've got to get this big old model to fit in there. So I would orientate it appropriately. And in this case, I'm going to, uh, let's get in back into our Z view here. Uh, I'm going to rotate this negative 90 degrees. And uh, then I'm going to come down and size it. Now along my X axis, it's 29 inches, uh, 29 inches. And um, the, uh, you know, I want to, you know, scale the uh, model, uh, resize, uh, scale the model to the material. Ooh, not that big. Let's go 29. I want to go 29. Okay. Uh, Cause that's how big my material is. But uh, you know, and you know, if this were flat, it would be laid out flat. Uh, we'd have another option down here, which we don't have in the rotary, where is to position that model in the material. Um, and uh, we want the model above our zero plane. And, I, and I'll show you that. We'll, we'll get into that. We'll do that a little later with a regular flat model so you can see that. But we have to scale it to fit and everything. Now, I want to actually bring in the full 3D model, not a flat version of it. I want to bring in the full 3D model. So I have a cylinder here. And the cylinder is sized, uh, uh, you know, based on my material. But my project here is way oversized when it comes in, right? It's kind of almost like it's in millimeters versus inches and stuff. So I need to size this down to 29 inches. Uh, I'm sorry, this one's four inches. I'm, gonna, I'm in a six inch diameter, but I'm going four inches in diameter. And my aspect ratio here is uh, if I do four inches, it's 30, you know, 30.84 inches in length. Well, I'm going to scale it. I'm going to unlock the aspect ratio here and make this my 29. Um, and, uh, you know, so it's uh, within my material. And then I'm going to resize my material block accordingly uh, if needed. Uh, and then I'm going to click OK. And that's it. Right. So. <clears throat> We're going to import that spindle in. All right. Bum, bum, bum. Okay. Now, when you first bring a model in into Vetric, VCar, Desktop Pro, or Aspire, you know, especially depending on how much resolution you have and everything, uh, you see how it's kind of blurry and fuzzy here? Uh, depending on your CPU and the processing power and all the stuff going on in your computer, it's going to take a second for that to clear up and kick in. Uh, you will actually see uh, in a moment it clear up just like it is now, right? Uh, and every time we move this, uh, you know, it pixelates again, and then it takes a second for it to regenerate this view, depending on how many pixels and stuff we're dealing with. And, uh, you know, uh, it will uh, bounce back to its original version. It's kind of rebuilding all of those uh, different uh, cells and stuff. So there we go. And all. So this is my cylinder, my fourth axis cylinder. Now, if this was sized appropriately for what I needed to do, which it is, right? You know, if it was sized appropriately, Literally, I've done everything that I need to do as far as this project is concerned, uh, you know, as a finished project. All I would need to do now is come over and create my 3D rough cut and my 3D finish cut uh, tool pass and be done with it. Right. But I'm not done with it. I actually want to uh, recreate this model from scratch. I want to build this model from scratch. Uh, and everything. And uh, we um, we're gonna we're gonna get into the drawing of this, and uh, we're gonna do it right. We're gonna do it upright. Now, before we get into that, I'm gonna look over here, and I'm gonna keep kind of peeking over to the comment section, uh, and so that way I can keep up with your questions. Um. All right. So. I don't see any questions right off the bat. Uh, dum, dum, dum. So good. So we'll just keep moving forward. And if you have questions, if you have questions, 
ask your questions. It doesn't have to be related to fourth axis, just Vetric related or whatever. Uh, ask the question and I'll do my best to answer it. It's a Q&A as we talk about design, right? So we're going to be kind of jumping back and forth. I like keeping you guys and girls on your tubes. All right. And uh, so, all right. So with that, let's get over here to our drawing side of our software. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm going to unwrap this project. This icon right up here, uh, the little spindle with the light bulb on it, allows me to turn off my wrapping uh, to basically turn this into a flat project. And uh, this project's got some unique uh, shape to it, right? It's got some uh, nice curves uh, and uh, concaves and everything. Uh, and then we've got some floral decoration down here and stuff. And then we have these unique looking uh, tubular flutes that are kind of at a bit of an angle uh, kind of coming down. And then we have partial over here and partial over there, because when this thing gets wrapped up, those two meet together and it creates kind of that uh, twisted spiral, uh, you know, of these uh, of these flutes and stuff. And so that's going to be fun to experiment with and draw. Right. What if I didn't have this model and I really wanted to design something, you know, elegant like this and stuff, uh, which, by the way, this model, along with uh, the other uh, 37 that I have or the other few that I have, um, I buy them off of eBay and stuff. And uh, they're really nice quality models uh, and everything uh, for not a whole lot of price. Now, within the new Vetric, I think uh, is a version, what, 10? maybe 9.5 or 10 in the actual clip art uh, Vetric uh, actually threw in in the list here. Uh, they actually threw in some molded profiles for different uh, moldings, you know, for your molding tool path, uh, as well as some rotary, some gen general, just very generic general rotary profiles for balusters and things like that uh, to use with like your two rail sweep tool and things like that. So that's pretty cool. Uh, and also thanks for that, Patrick. But what I'd like to do is I would like to um, make this and I'm going to take a quick, uh, I'm going to go into my uh, X axis, oop, not my X axis, my Y axis view here. And we can see that general shape and profile there, right? Uh, and all that happy jazz. Um, I'm not going to get, I'm not going to, you know, duplicate this exactly to its uh, effect, but, uh, we've got, uh, two beads concave, another bead. We got our big bead there and I'm going to try to memorize this profile. Wonderful. All right. And then I'm going to come in here and I'm going to turn off, uh, my layer. So it's blank because we're going to start from scratch. Whoa. Okay. All right. Now let's see how well I remember the design. Okay. So uh, first thing I always do is I start off with a rectangle, right? <clears throat> a rectangle. Now on my rectangle, my rectangle is going to be 29 inches, right? The length of my uh, cylinder. And it's going to be two inches uh, in height because my whole cylinder all the way around is four inches, right? When it's wrapped. So the radius of that, if you will, would be two inches. So I'm going to go two inches and, uh, I'm going to, uh, drop that right on there. Wonderful. And then when we are creating a profile, we do not need the bottom line of the profile here. That's a span that we can get rid of. So I'm going to go into node editing mode and I'm going to right click on the line and delete that span. So a span is another name for a line arc or curve that is between two node points. So this is a span, this is a span, this one, and this one's a span, right? So I'm going to delete this lower span. We don't need it. Okay, cool. Now to get off my board so we can see all the sides of it and everything as we draw this, I'm going to take and drag this profile down here. 
so we can see what in the world we're doing. Now, uh, we have some beads and some coves uh, and things, and we have some sweeps and stuff. The most interesting part of this for me, because I've not done it before, is going to be creating that kind of spiral flute. You know, if I'm designing the profile that I'm going to do a two rail sweep on, uh, creating that sweeping flute that kind of twists around the leg, that's going to be a cool element to add in. Uh, I have not uh, done that uh, before, so uh, this is all going to be experimental. And also, I'm going to take a little bit of uh, my own, you know, thoughts and design and stuff and add it in here. I don't have to match that exactly, but it would be pretty cool if I get darn close because I don't have a photographic memory and I don't actually remember what that profile looks like right now, but I do have an idea. So... Uh, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create my beads and I'm going to start off with a circle uh, and um, I'm going to basically kind of uh, get that into place and uh, imagine that this whole profile is going to be created with, you know, those, those different things, but I'm going to kind of get that into place about right there. Uh, and then I'm going to, on this profile, it had a smaller bead kind of right next to it. So that's good. I'll just hold down my control key, right? When you're in transform mode and see, this is a learning lesson, not just about rotary, but it's about designing and stuff too, right? When I'm in transform mode, transform mode is when I double click on an object and everything. I can hold down my control key and I can drag a copy off, uh, you know, of my object. And I'm going to hold down my shift key uh, now, and I'm going to size this down a bit and slide it into position, kind of kiss it up against that one. And man, it's looking like that already, right? Okay. Now we're pretty much consistent at the top and the bottom on our two uh, shapes and everything. So I'm actually going to draw a line. I'm going to find the center of my span here. And I'm going to draw a line straight down that's going to get deleted after the fact. But what that will allow me to do is, uh, you know, as I create things, I can select them and select that line and I can go into my mirror tool and I can flip them about that line. Right. And I can duplicate them on the other side. So that way I'm just kind of dealing with one end and stuff. Now, when we get into the middle here uh, and we start creating those flutes, that's when it's going to get kind of unique because we won't really create that in this profile. Uh, it's more going to be a flat area in the profile and we're going to actually come up into our work area and we're going to draw out our vectors and we're going to use in the modeling tools, the create shape tool to build those shapes up. Right? Cool. All right. So um, as we, you know, as we're going along and of course, you know, I know you guys are like, focus like okay what's he talking about uh but don't forget this is a q a too so if you have questions again if it's even not related to what we're doing here ask the question and i'll do my best to answer and all that wonderful jazz now when we came off when we come off of these two beads uh and everything um we have a bit of a concave that happens right uh, and then it comes into a nice curved profile. So um, we're going to uh, create our little concave. And what I'm going to do for that is I'm going to go into node editing. All right. On my profile here, I'm going to go into node editing. And right here at the side here, I'm going to insert a point. Okay. On that line, I'm going to insert a point there. And then I'm going to come out just a little bit. And if I, I mean, I could really, if I wanted to be precise, like, you know, uh, to the nail, I could throw a guideline here, you know, and snap a guideline to the center of that node and say, okay, I want to right click on this guideline. And I want to create another relative guide to the right of it uh, an eighth of an inch away. And, um, uh, let's see here. And, uh, it'd be a positive number cause I'm going to the right and I could create another guide 
and boom, I got another guide there that I could allow me to go into node editing and I could insert another point there, right? And so this is going to be my little lip before the concave starts. Uh, and then I'm going to have another set of uh, points and um, all that happy jazz. So let's say that I want to go right about here and I'm just picking a spot because I'm a rebel that way. And I'm going to insert a point there. And just to be precise, I'm going to drag this guideline over here, right click on it and say, okay, I want to create a relative guide an eighth of an inch away, create that guide. And I'm going to insert, go back into node editing and insert a point there. Okay. Insert a point. Okay. So now I have two points here and between these two points on this span, it's a line right now. I'm going to right click on this line and turn it into an arc and I'm going to pull that arc down. Okay. Pull it down as, you know, however far you want it to go and all that stuff. It all depends on how far you want your arc to go. All right. So now I've got my two beads and we're, we haven't done any trimming and everything to put this together yet. I still have two circles here. They're not beads yet. Uh, and then I've got my arc here that kind of just, you know, it, it flows into this. Now, right at this point here, from here to, oh, let's call it Let's call it right about here. Uh, I'm going to insert a point. Okay. And on this point, I'm going to right click on this line, this span, and I'm going to turn it into a busy a curve. Okay, busy curve. And I'm going to pull this curve up. And down. All right, to create this profile here. Okay. Now, just for kicks and giggles and all that good jazz, if I turned on my uh, my model here and we clicked on, get back into selection mode, and I clicked on that model so it darkens up, I'm almost pretty darn close right there, right? Not bad for giving it a guess. Um, and, uh, and it was a guess. That was pretty good. All right. So now uh, at the top of this Bezier curve, I'm going to go back into node editing. Uh, there's going to be a kind of a bit of a bead here, a little bit of a, a step up and uh, then a bead, if you will. So I'm just going to pick uh, just a place close by here and uh, I'm going to insert a point and I'm actually going to just pull this point up straight not far and look it's crooked oh my goodness well that's easy enough to fix if i select the the node that i want to align to first hold down my shift key and select the node i want to align left to right is my x-axis up and down is my y so if i hit the letter x on my keyboard it will pull that line into adjustment now when it did that it changed my curve here. You saw how it shot that node down there and it created that curl and that's cool and all, but I really don't want to do that much of a sweep. I just want a nice sweep into that, that step up there. Now, when I did that, it threw this whole line off of kilter, right? Kind of tilted it up and all that good stuff. And I don't want to do that, you know, because I got to put my B back. So I'm going to go right about, uh, I'm going to come out a little bit and I'm going to insert a point there. And then right about here, I'm going to insert another point and I'm going to drag this point down. I'm going to try to align it with that point there and come straight down. And on these two, I'm just going to use my down arrow key and bump that down a little bit. And I'll probably end up putting some radiuses here just to uh, uh, so it's not so square because everything's got a nice flow to it. So let's do that. Let's go into my drawing tools and go to my 
fillet tool. And uh, I'm going to go with a one eighth inch uh, radius, uh, which is probably too big, a 16th of an inch radius. And all right, 16th is way too big. And so what I actually need to do is I'm going to take this and go into node editing. I want to spread this out a little bit. Now also look here, I got a bit of a crooked line right here, right? And I want to align to this. So I'm going to select this node first, hold down my shift key, select this node second. And this is up and down now. So I'm going to hit the letter Y on the keyboard and pull that into alignment. But I just bumped that out a little bit so I can go back to my fillet tool and I should be able to uh, still didn't go far enough on that. Uh, let's undo that. Let me go back into node editing. And I'm going to bump that over a little bit more. That should be good there. Got to be good, right? Uh, let's see here. There we go. Create that little bead there. Okay. Now, aside from that bead, the one thing that I've got to be mindful of is undercutting, right? So if we look here, there's a bit of an undercut, meaning that that cut is coming kind of back in towards here. My router bit is cutting straight down. It can't really do an undercut, right? So I'm actually going to take uh, these nodes here and I'm going to kind of uh, bump them out a little bit. And I'm going to take this node here and I'm going to bump that in a little so that it's not an undercut. Okay, so it's just a nice little sweep. All right. So, so far, this is our profile. Now we got another decent sized bead. So I'm actually going to use the circle tool and uh, I'm just going to drop a circle in here and it shouldn't be one inch. Let's go half inch in diameter. And I'm going to take and bump that right up to there. All right, cool. Okay, okie dokie. Now, up to this point, um, I am pretty well with what I'm doing, what I want to do here. And then right about somewhere right about here is where those flutes are going to start uh, and that those spiral flutes. And um, so what I want to do is I want to kind of... Uh, get things that need to be, you know, duplicated over here uh, and stuff. And once again, you know, just as a sneak peek, if we go back over here, uh, if we look at the 3D view, you can see that, you know, pretty much, except for this part right here, uh, the two beads in the concave area is pretty much consistent with what's down here, right? Um, now before this sweep here, they, they've got another larger bead that they put on the other end of that cave. So almost, uh, it's not quite as big as this one here, but they did throw that in there to kind of finish off this lower area before they went into this kind of curve, right? Uh, and stuff. And, uh, I didn't put that bead in there, right? Uh, in all. So, you know, I may leave it be, but we're getting into the area where we're going to start kind of needing to model these things here, which we'll do at a later time. And so this here is going to kind of finish off uh, that, you know, that top area. And again, I didn't throw a bead in here uh, like they had it. Uh, I could, but you know, I want it to be just a, maybe a little bit different. Um, I think the reason why they threw the bead in there is because we have these floral designs and those floral designs kind of wrap into the bottom of that bead, which I'm going to have floral designs in mind. And so it may be, you know, a good idea to do that right now. I'm not going to do that, but we might come back and change that up. Um, on here, I am going to make this bead right here a little bit bigger in size. Let's instead of, uh, uh, I'm going to go three quarters instead of a half inch. And I'm going to bump that over there. Okay. Now, 
in here, in here, uh, let's turn off our uh, layer, layer 25, turn that off, okay? In here, ignoring this line, this line doesn't mean anything. That's just kind of showing where my center is. Uh, I'm going to start kind of, you know, getting things uh, ready to form in. Uh, but before I do that, I'm actually going to delete these two parts here. And I'm going to come in right here on node editing for a moment. And I'm going to cut the vector right here. Cut it. Cut the vector right here. Okay. And uh, I'm going to take this object, select it. I'm going to hold down my shift key and select that line. And I'm going to mirror that by flipping it about the line. I'm going to flip it over to this side, right? Now, when I did that, of course, I created a duplicate right here, which is a no-no. We don't want to do that. So I'm going to go back into node editing and I'm going to find my, uh, click on this here and I'm going to actually click on this here. I'm going to see where that point is and uh, I'm going to create another point right here and I'm going to cut this vector, cut it, cut it away. So that way I can delete that extra duplicate that I had right and now i need to take these two guys and simply join them together with a straight line just like that okay all right so now it's back to one vector now on this here uh, if i go into node editing uh, i've got these two points i don't need this point right here i'm going to delete it right i just want a nice continuous line but i do want this point because this point is showing my kind of eighth inch spacing right there. And it shows me where I should put my next bead. So I'm going to take a bead and let's go three quarters this time, 0.75. And let's drop it there. And um, I'm going to go into transform mode and I'm going to drag this out and snap it. To that I don't think that was the right point let's go to node editing no I was way off I'm gonna come over here and snap it oh not that one you goofball get out of node editing mode I'm gonna come back here and grab the side of it and I'm gonna slide it back until it snaps to that point all right so now it's on that point all right snapping tools you got smart snapping and geometry snapping up here and that's what these things are for so if you have them off you're doing yourself a big disservice. Have them suckers turned on. You want to be able to snap to other objects and everything. It's very important and, uh, you know, all that happy jazz. All right. So now uh, back in node editing here on the side of this bead here, this is where I need to kind of drop uh, this line from this bead to this bead. I need to drop this line down because I'm going to be building models on here. And uh, I, I need that space, that height, uh, and depending on how tall or how high my flutes are going to be. So I'm going to drop a uh, node right here, insert a point, not drop a node. I'm going to insert a point, right? I should use the proper term. So you guys are like, what's he mean by drop a point? I'm going to insert a point here. Okay. Now, right next to... Um, or right at this point, okay, I'm going to select, uh, let's do it this way. I'm going to literally insert another point here, and I'm going to drag this point right straight down underneath. Remember, straight down, so I want to select here, select here, and hit the letter X to align those up, okay? Okay. And notice I'm not right on my, my bead there. So I'm actually, while they're selected, I'm going to bump them over. All right. Uh, hold down the control key. And if I bump, it's micro movement. I want to center it right on there. 
All right, cool. Okay. And uh, the reason why I did that, you'll see in a minute. Let's go over to the other side. And let's insert a point. Let's drag this point and snap it right to the center of that line. And I want to insert another point right beside it and drag that one down below, straight down. I don't care if I'm straight in line right at this point because I will line these two up in a moment, but I want to make sure that I'm straight here. So if I align to that, I'm going to select that one first, this one second, left and right is X and Y, so or X, so I'm going to hit X and get that nice and straight. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to grab and click on the lower one here. Hold down my shift key, click on the lower one here, and I'm going to use my down arrow on my keyboard, and I'm going to bump that down, okay? And I'm only going to bump it down uh, the distance that I want my fluted models, those spiral twisted models to be, you know, how tall I want them to be. Uh, and everything. So I need to kind of give myself that relief there. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to take a guideline and snap it to this node. And I'm going to give myself a guideline down here it's to a known distance. I'm going to right click and say, okay, create a relative guide and I'm going down. So that's a negative number. Uh, I want to go down. Let's say, uh, Let's say I want the base of those things to be 3.8. So let's go 0.375. And I'm going to create that guideline. And now I have a reference line to uh, bring my bottom line up to. So I'm going to go back into node editing mode. I'm going to select this node and this node. And I'm just going to pull them both up to that line. And you can grab one. If you have two highlighted, you grab one, it'll move both of them. Okay. And uh, my line is nice and straight. So I'm happy with that. Wonderful. Great. I'm going to get rid of this guideline here and this guideline here. And I'm going to get rid of these guidelines here as well. Now I'm just dragging these guidelines back into the rulers, but I could have absolutely turned them off with this corner box right here. I could have clicked on that to turn them off or I could have went to view guidelines and I could have turned them off here or deleted them or locked them in place, unlock them, all that cool stuff, right? All right, so I don't need my center line anymore. I'm kind of good with that. And now I need to kind of start drawing my, or cleaning up my bees. So I'm gonna use my trim tool and trim here and here, here and here. Wow, look how that comes together there and there. Uh, let's come over here and trim this and that, that and that, and trim that. Okay, so our beads and all come together. Now, I have uh, here, I have it coming down to kind of a straight, you know, straight cut right here. I don't have any little radiuses on the corners here and stuff, I could kind of round them off. So it's a nice flowing round into that concave on both ends. And I could use my fillet tool to do that. I could, you know, throw a radius here and here. So it's a nice, just a nice flow uh, instead of a sharp corner. Over here. I could do the same thing. And this is my profile. Okay. Now I've created some humps. I've created some lumps and bumps and beads and all. And so I've changed my two inch height. It's now different. It's no longer two inches uh, and things. Uh, so I need to take my overall height here on my size and get back to the two inches. Now I'm going to turn off the scaling or the, uh, the link X and Y. I don't want to change my 29 inches, but I do want to bring this down to two inches. Okay. So that reduces that and everything. So I have my four inch diameter cylinder when it's all wrapped and stuff. All right. 
So how many of you have I put to sleep yet? Are y'all still awake? You know, I could be like Emerald Lagasse and lay a bam every time, you know, make you jump like, oh, what was that? You know, right? And uh, sorry if I woke Michael up, but uh, uh, so are you still with me? You following along? What are you thinking so far? Give me some feedback in the chat so I know that you're alive. All right, cool. All right. Um, so now I have a profile here. And I'm actually going to use the two provided uh, rails here, those two blue lines that they gave me. I'm going to use those to do my two rail sweep, okay, uh, in there, right? So uh, before I do my two rail sweep, I want to look at this curve, and I want to see if I want to go a little bit more, a little bit more dramatic. Uh, let me think here. I think I want more of a more of a curve right here, right? So I'm going to go back into node editing. And now when I change this, it's going to change my height again and, and all that stuff. And what I'm going to do this time instead of, uh, you know, as a matter of fact, I'm going to do this differently. I'm going to go undo, right? And undo that size change, that two inch, because I don't like the way it squished my beads. I'm just going to cut the extra height off of the bottom here. I'll get my two inches and I'll cut my extra height off the bottom, whatever it is. So uh, I undid that. I undid what I just did. And now I want to, I want to look at my curve before I start thinking about sizing this. And I want to, I think I want more of a bulge there. And, uh, more of a sweep there. All right, let's make sure that I didn't create an undercut. Now, I don't like the way it doesn't flow into this bead nicely. It's kind of jagged right here, you know, and everything. So I'm going to uh, delete this point. Ooh. When I did that, it changed my arc and all. Daggone. Daggone you. I'm going to grab this guy, and I'm going to pull him down, down, all right, let's take a look at this from a distance, what a nice, I just want a nice curve there, you know, uh, okay, now, when it transitions, let's see what it looks like when it transitions into this bead. Kind of flows in and then that bead starts, right? So I kind of want to eliminate. Kind of want to let. I don't want to make it look funky. That looks funky here. Hold on. Let's undo that. I'm going to stick with it. I'll stick with it. That's fine. All right. Now I have, I need an overall two inches, right? So if I go to the top, if I dig a guideline and snap to the highest point on my design, which is uh, right up here. Yeah. I'll get it snapped there in a minute. Uh, right there, that is the highest point of my model. And I'm going to right click on here and say, okay, create a relative guide. I'm going down. That's a negative number. I want to go two inches because that's how big my piece needs to be. Right. And that's going to show me where I need to cut the ends off. Okay. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to go into node editing. And on this line, I'm going to insert a point. And then I'm actually going to jump right in and delete the span right over here i'm going to right on that line insert a point and then on this line put the mouse and delete that span so now i should have if i did that correctly if i look at the size of this i should be at two inches oh i was off just by a little bit that's all right i'll fix it and click apply 
All right, slight adjustment. I was off by a few thousandths of an inch, no big deal. All right, let's get rid of those guidelines. Now I have a profile worthy of sweeping, okay? All right, now, yes, Ronnie Probert, uh, you know, he sees it already, he sees the vision, say, you know, this would make a nice pitiful stool for a round table. Absolutely, right? Uh, and that's, you know, uh, that's a, that's a great option for something like this. Um, Robert Costa says, if you wanted to keep the profile that you created, that you created, uh, there, but wanted to taper it from the top to the bottom of the spindle, when would you do that? Uh, you would do, so if we wanted to keep the profile, uh, but let's say on this line here, just as an example, Robert, Let's say I wanted to taper this uh, so it kind of goes into a taper, you know, where it gets a little, a little thinner here. I would do that at this point before I sweep it. So I would come into my node editing and I would grab this node and I would determine, and I could use my guidelines and stuff, but I would determine how much of a taper I want uh, and stuff. And if I wanted to, let's say I wanted to, uh, you know, taper the whole thing in, uh, you know, I could reduce that down and have a bit of a taper come in and I could select that and have a bit of a taper, you know, come in and all. So you can, you add that taper wherever you want to in your profile. And that's a great question because, you know, you may want that tapered leg or you may want maybe the internal area just to kind of taper thinner so that when those spirals come around that they're fat down here and thin thin down here, right? And we may do that once we create those spirals, we may say, you know what? Let's taper them in so it has more of a skinnier look at the top of that, right? So that'd be a good suggestion, Robert. Um, if you created an undercut without realizing it, what would happen? That's a great question. So if I created an undercut where my router bit couldn't get to, uh, then the router bits, you know, it's just going to cut straight. It's not going to be able to do that undercut. So if I had some kind of decorative undercut uh, and things, let's say as an example, let's say I had an undercut. Uh, let's let me add a point right here. Insert a point. Let's say I had an undercut uh, that. What in the world are you drawing there, Laney? Hold on and let me get my shape back. I got everything crisscrossed. Crisscross. Hold on. Let me. I spun the wrong way. Okay. Uh, let's get this back into shape. Let's say just for, this is an extreme undercut, but let's say I create that undercut and everything. Well, the router bit's going to come down and cut this and that part of the design just won't be there, right? It won't create it. Uh, you know, so it'll just cut straight down and stuff, right? That was crazy undercut, right? Uh, but uh, it just, it would cut straight because our router bit cuts straight down. Our router bit can't tilt to cut in there and, you know, and all that good stuff. So, um, it, uh, it would just cut straight down in that area that was undercut. Just, it wouldn't, it would just flow differently. It'd be kind of more of a straight cut down or something. So that's a great question. All right. So now that I have a profile here and I'm, I'm seriously going to think about that taper, Robert, we'll see about that, you know, depending on let's create our models first and our shapes and see what it comes up. But I'm going to use uh, these two blue rails that were created here that uh, when I created the rotary, uh, Vetric threw all those rails in. Great on them for doing that. And I'm going to go into my modeling tool and I'm going to go into my two rail sweep. And I'm going to grab this rail and hold down my shift key and grab this rail, those two blue lines. And I'm going to use that as my drive rails. Make sure your arrows are facing the correct direction. If they're not facing the correct direction, then it will twist <laughs> your entire model. It will not come out right, right? So make sure those arrows are facing the right direction. Okay, cool. Now that I've got that selection, now I'm going to select my profile here and I'm going to scale it, uh, the cross section uh, with the width, right? So it'll, it'll, you know, it won't scale. And I want to sweep it between those two spans. Um, and 
I'm going to click apply and process that. Hey, Darwin, how are you doing so far? Yes, don't forget to save. Uh, thank you. See, Darwin jumped in uh, last minute and said, hey, Lainey, I knew you didn't save it by now, by the time I got here. Don't forget to save your project. So let's do that. Uh, we've just swept that model so we can look at the 3D view of that. That's not the model. That's cheating. Hold on. Let's turn off our, um, let's turn off our uh, other model. <laughs> I turned off the layer, right? But I didn't turn off the other mo model, right? So that was cheating, okay? So, so far, this is my, the profile that I've created, okay? It's kind of bare and bland and, and empty right now, but that's the, the shape that I've created to this point. Um, but let's take a minute and let's go file save as always save early and save often. And I get so into uh, the projects that I forget, right? And we gotta train our brains not to forget. Uh, and uh, we're gonna call this our rotary Q and A, <laughs> right? Just, that's what it is. That's what we're doing, a rotary Q and A. Hey, Michael Bell, how are you doing? Thanks for popping in. All right, so now we've got a profile and you see if we uh, let it uh, finish saving this file and uh, let that yellow bar travel across and save the file while I'm talking to you. And uh, while it's doing that, let's just uh, come over here. Um, so yeah, save early, save often. Thanks Darwin for that, uh, you know, you saving me, right? Because with this Aspire and everything I'm doing and all the streaming and my computer and all that, I could lose it, right? After all that work, it could be gone. I'd have to start over, and that would be no good for class. Um, the uh, um, the dip that I've got there, that re recess down, I'm going to be creating these kind of spiral shapes using the Create Shape tool in the software, which we'll see in a minute. Uh, and I'm going to be building them up on it because they're actually going to go at an angle. And I can't really simulate that in a single profile. I can create my rough. This is my rough, right? Now I'm going to build on top of this model. I'm going to add some floral designs on top of that model down at the bottom of that round area. And I'm going to build those uh, shapes that kind of spiral around. Uh, but I needed the foundation. And this general profile here is my foundation, right? So uh, it's uh, let that finish saving. It's still saving. While it's doing it, I'm going to take a sip of Invisible Sprite. Good stuff. Is it is it milk that does a body good or Sprite? I can't remember, but that's good stuff. All right, so it's saved. Let's get back to business. All right, so I've got my shape here and all that wonderful jazz. And if we wrap it up right now, wrap it up into a cylinder, uh, we've got a pretty naked looking pole. <laughs> We have, uh, if I if I put a crown over here and I held it right there, it'd be a scepter, right? And, and like a king's scepter, right? Uh, but that's our, that's our shape uh, up to this point. Now we're going to fill in some blanks, right? We're going to fill in some blanks and stuff. So let's unwrap this. And this time for this, we're going to go into the 2D view. Uh, and we're going to uh, draw in our drawing area of where, you know, our, our flutes and all. And you see how when I clicked on this, you know, how it's kind of grayed out. But when I click on it, it's real deep and dark and black and all that stuff. Um, I don't want to be trying to draw on that uh, to get my shapes and everything. But I do want some references, right? I want some references. And I'm going to take a guideline and I'm going to snap it right here. And I'm going to take another guideline from my ruler and I'm going to snap it right here. And now I can come in for the moment and I can turn off that model. And I've got the area that I want to draw in, right? I've got it kind of laid out where I want to draw in. 
right? And I can always, you know, as I come in, I can, you know, turn my, my model back on and look at it in the 3D view and all that happy stuff. Now, if I want to be dead exact where this goes, if you look down here, my guideline missed the mark a little bit. I can drag it and snap it right to my profile because my profile was didn't move, right? It was, oh, I had the hiccups now. It was swept right across there. Uh, so over here, let's take this guideline and snap it right there. And now I am perfectly aligned with my guidelines where I need to be. So I can turn off this model for the time being and I can start kind of drawing my other shapes uh, and things. All right, so uh, let's take a reference here real quick. And let's go into this, let's go into the 3D view, uh, 3D view. And um, let's switch this around. And you see how these uh, shapes, they kind of almost have a slight little curve to them, right? They kind of almost like a little a bend, a little S curve. And that kind of, when that thing is wrapped, uh, let it wrap it up. That's what gives it that, that twisted look, that twisted look. Uh, and guys and girls that ever make, if you ever made like uh, taps, uh, you know, for uh, beer kegs or coffee machines, you know, for coffee shops and things like that, or for, for lounges and pubs and all, and you want to create 3D models and carve taps and things uh, to sell to those places. I used to sell to different pubs. I used to own a restaurant and a lounge and a bar and everything, but uh, I used to sell, uh, you know, different um, uh, keg pulls handles, you know, for those uh, those spout handles uh, and also coffee shops, gourmet coffee shops and things uh, that use uh, those spouts. You can with different coffees and all, but having a handle with that kind of cool decorative twist to it is just awesome, right? Awesome. Okay. So we're going to try to create something similar to this. Not exactly. We're going to create something similar to this. And then we may look, if we look at this closely when it's wrapped, okay, you see how uh, um, we were talking taper earlier, right? Robert uh, mentioned taper. You see how we're fat at this end and it kind of, it thins down to here. Well, it's a little bit of a deceiving thing. If we unwrap this, right, it's at the height you know, the, the top of this is just below the height of this bead. But this, if we turn this to the side, this bottom part is above this bead here. And so it kind of gives that tapered look, right? It gives a bit of that tapered look. Even though it's kind of straight across, it's fatter down here than it is here and so on and so forth. But still, we could taper if we wanted to and all that jazz. All right, so now... The popo's coming. <laughs> Y'all probably heard that ambulance. All right, that's an ambulance, not a police siren. Okay, so um, oh, and by the way, what was it like four or five week or four weeks back or something like that? I was doing a live event with you guys and girls, and um, there was a bunch of booms and then sirens, and I thought it was like gunshots and all that or whatever. Uh, it wasn't. There was a, an apartment fire next door. Uh, and uh, the big booms were the electrical explosions <laughs> and everything. Nobody was hurt, but uh, that's what was happening. There was a there was a fire in the apartments next door, uh, two buildings down because uh, I live in an industrial area and my house is uh, business zoned. Uh, but anyway, it's uh, it was an apartment fire. Nobody was hurt. Everybody got out. But those big booms were the explosions that we thought were gunshots. If you guys were with me during that night. Anyway. All right. Uh, unrelated, but thought that was a funny story. Okay. Um, not a funny story. Not, God, that sounded terrible. Uh, nothing funny about that, but uh, I just wanted to share that. Okay. Um, all right. Now, let's create our design. So I'm going to be using the modeling tool here, the, not there, the modeling tool that's called Create Shape. I'm going to create shape a shape from vectors uh, and things, or I could use a two rail sweep option, or even a single rail sweep where I draw a single line and then a profile and have that line pro follow that profile. So I got some options here, right? Um, if I did a two rail sweep, basically 
I would start off, if it was a two rail sweep, I would start off with a rectangle that would represent, you know, kind of the width of uh, the that bead that I wanted. Uh, and then I would go into node editing mode and, uh, you know, I would take this here and I would pump this down a little bit, right, to create that angle. And then I would turn these lines into Bezier curves. And uh, I would kind of, you know, create a bit of that uh, sweep effect. Let's see here. That would go this way. Actually, let's do this a better way. Let's watch this stuff. Get everything nice and squared and straight. Uh, I'm going to turn these into a Bezier curve first. Okay. And uh, I will take this here and I will select both of them and use my arrow keys and kind of pull them down. And then I'm going to select both of these anchors. So when I'm moving the lines, they are moving consistently together. Right. Uh, and these here, uh, I could kind of pull up that way. Right. And if I was happy with those and everything, and then I could kind of reduce my curve a little bit. Right. And I could create, you know, that flow. Uh, and, uh, you know, I could say, okay, now that I have that, uh, let's create, uh, if I hold down my, if I go um, hold down my control key and drag a copy here, you know, I could start aligning these shapes. I don't have to get them perfectly aligned right now. Um, I'll do that in a moment uh, and stuff. And one more. Okay. Now uh, I'll start with this one here and uh, I'll select this one here. Right. Um, and I will just pull this up and kiss it into the edge of that one. I'll grab this one here. Pull it up and kiss it into the edge of that one. Grab this one here. Pull it up, kiss it to the edge of that one. Here. Kiss that to the edge. And work my way down. Double click, get it in transform mode, and just drag it and kiss it up against there. All right. Awesome. Awesome blossom. Now, I'm going to take this uh, these objects here. And I'm going to center them, center them on this part. So I want to go into my alignment tool and align to the material up and down. Okay, center them. All right, nice. Now, this part up here is going to be this overhang right here. So I'll need to take this vector and move it up there. Right. So it kind of blends together. And then this part down here would be, you know, what overhung up here and uh, all that happy jazz. Right. If I was, you know, wrapping this shape around, I wouldn't create the shape and have it overhang there and overhang here and then wrap around. It won't do that because anything outside of the drawing area uh, won't it won't create that model. It cuts it off. So I have to, you know. If I was, if this curve was flowing around to here, then, um, you know, um, we, we have to, you know, draw that shape in and have it flow, right? And trim. Uh, and you'll see here the, uh, I'm going to, you'll, you'll see here how I kind of do that. But first of all, um, as this wraps around, it's going to wrap around to here. And as this wrap around, it wraps around to here. And this, these sizes, the thickness here, it's really not, uh, it's really not the right size, right? It, you know, I would much prefer to scale this, uh, down, 
so that both of these ends touch here and here. And that way, this is a consistent flow to there. And these two whisks together, they may be the same size as my other beads, right? Or I could say, all right, what is my overall height? What's my parts here? And how many divide into that, right? How many of those shapes divide into that evenly and equal distance so that you know, because there's a there's a hidden one right here and here that isn't there. So basically, if I took this, just so you can kind of see what I mean, if I took this and held down my control key and drag and snap it to there, let's let's try that again. Straight down this time. And I took this one here, or yeah, I'm sorry. If I took just this one here like it is, if I wrapped this around, right, this shape, if this shape was wrapping around to there, it's not going to fit. You know what I mean? It's, it's not going to fit. And I can validate that by drawing a line right down the center. And taking these two shapes right here and moving, if I double click it and put it in transform mode, grab that line and move that up to where that line snaps there, you can see that it's too fat, right? So that means I'm going to have a skinny bead right here. And that's not a good design. So I'm going to back step. I'm going to back step a little bit. It's a little. Now, I would like to have the consistent amount of beads. So if I said I want six of these, uh, my overall height, my overall height is that. <laughs> 12.5664. Okay. I'll copy that value. My overall height is 12.5664. Okay. Uh, if I broke out into uh, a calculator, I could do it in the Vetric software as well in any one of those boxes, but it's easier if I pull out the calculator. And I could paste that value in there and I could say, okay, I want six of these beads, right? I could divide that by six and it would tell me what my width needs to be. Okay. Now just to cheat a little bit, let's take a look at our 3d model and our 3d view and let's see how many they did. They did this counts as one. So this one over here and this one over here count as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. So it did seven, right? I'm doing six uh, and things like that, you know? So if I look at my calculator and say, okay, um, my, let's clear this and, uh, you know, divided by seven, you know, that would be the size that shape needs to be so that, you know, they fit across. Okay. Right. Do we think I did that right? I think I did, but let's find out. Let's validate. Uh, let's take my overall height here. Go to my size. I want to keep the length, uh, nothing there. So on the height, I want to adjust the uh, value. Okay, um, I want to move that into position and uh, let's duplicate that seven times. I'll get them all lined up here in a minute. I'm just dragging them down right now snapping into the next one 
What do I got here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's not right either. What's my deal there? Oh, I'm an idiot. Hold on a minute. Duh. That's how the, the, the 1.7, uh, my value needs to um, be the width of the highest part. Uh, not, not the overall, not the overall, but the width of one end, you know, not the overall. Uh, duh. Okay, so let's drag a guideline down here. Snap it to the top there, and I'm going to right-click on that guideline and make a relative guide. And um, I'm going uh, down, so it'll be a negative number. And uh, uh, I'm going to do this. I'll do the math in here. 12.556 divided by 7 equals. There we go. Put a minus sign in front of that. Create the new guide. Okay. Yeah, I was close on that one. <laughs> Let's go into note editing. Let's pull that up to there. All right. Someone, is someone trying to give me uh, some notification or something? Someone's trying to call me. Um, okay. Let me, I'm looking at my chat. Let me see here. Make sure I didn't miss something. I thought you guys were trying to get my attention or something. All right. Michael Bell. Uh, oh, no. Michael Nolan first. Michael Nolan says, could you use the array tool for that or does it not work in 3D modeling? Absolutely, I could use the array tool. Uh, I absolutely could use the array tool for that, Michael Nolan. Uh, you need to start with a rectangle the right size and then add the curve. Thank you, Michael. Michael knows exactly that. Uh, that's what I needed to do. I have to start with a rectangle, the size, and then create the curve and all that jazz. Um, and, uh, you know, then create the curve, you know, based on how I want and the angle that I want to twist it and everything, and then should fit seven across. Right. Oh, and, uh, you know, so if we, you know, change these back into lines here, uh, select those two nodes and pull them back into place. Uh, let's get this Let's get this line squared up. Select this one first. This one last. Hit the letter Y on the keyboard and pull that into alignment. Okay. And so we start off with our rectangle at the right size. Uh, and then we can, uh, you know, add that curve or twist into it uh, and everything. Um, yeah. All right, let's go back into node editing. Node editing. And uh, let's turn these into Bezier curves. In keyboard shortcut for node editing. Is it curves? Uh, let's. Oop, not that one first. Uh, this one's a busy curve. Let's select both of these together. I think I'm happy with that. All right. Now, what Michael uh, Nolan was asking is, can we create, can we use the array tool uh, to um, to create this, uh, you know, array of the seven and, and things like that? Uh, and uh, the array tool is uh, right here, right? Array objects and everything. 
And uh, my current object, uh, the overall height of it is, uh, it, with that twist in it, is that 2.609. But uh, with the array tool, I could say, okay, create seven rows, one column with a uh, gap or an offset, right? Whichever one we want. Uh, and uh, in this case, a gap of zero, and the gap is from the right edge to the left edge or from the bottom to the top, you know, uh, and uh, we could copy those. And of course, control Z, I want to go in a negative direction. Are you going to, oh, it's not going to let me do that. Um, Uh, not that was the wrong one to put a let's control Z uh, negative zero and copy down now that put a bigger gap than zero there uh, and um, so I've got to be a little bit more specific Let's do an offset. And my offset value needs to be 2.6009. Should need to be that. It better need to be that. Uh, it might not be. It might, let me here. Hold on a second. Let me take a measurement real quick. Because I have a sneaking suspicion that uh, it's uh, going to be one or the other. So let me take a measurement. So that I have a value that I can work with. Because it's going to be one or the other. Let's go back over here to our array tool. Uh, do an offset on the Y. Let's do this one first, uh, negative. And let's see. All right, too much of a gap there. Let's go with our other value, which is 179371. 1.79371. There we go. Okay. Sneak and suspicion. All right. So, yes, you can use the array tool. And uh, so you see here how we have uh, this overhang will go here. And that will give me, you know, sufficient, sufficient form. Okay. Sufficient form. Uh, and we're going to... Uh, to create this uh, part over here, uh, we're simply going to take a straight line and <clears throat> we're going to go from here to right about here. Okay. That was the most crooked line I've ever drawn. Did I draw that? Holy cow. Uh, let's go into node editing and fix that. Wow. That was terrible. All right. And let's pull this up. Uh, I'm going to zoom in tight till right about where it crosses right here. I'm going to drag this node and snap it right about there. All right. So I'm going to... Um, because I have to have a closed vector, so I'm going to duplicate this line. I'm going to right-click and copy, right-click and paste, or Control-C, Control-V. It doesn't matter. So I have two lines here um, because I'm going to trim...
let's uh and i'm going to copy and paste this as well uh control c Kobe. there we go uh and i'm going to trim one object I'm going to join those with a straight line. Oh, wrong way. Come on now. Let me trim it over here as well, too. Hold on a second. Trim these away. Okay, so I should have this vector right there. All right, and that's uh, that should be a closed vector. Oh, it's still open. So let's move that down. That's going to be the shape that I need. And uh, let's trim this away. Ah, oh, it's not going to let me do that. Let's go into node editing mode. And let me zoom in here. Should let me trim right to that line. Oh, you booger. All right, I'm just going to delete... I'm going to insert a point right here and delete this span. And then I'm going to join by bringing those two ends together. This button right here. Okay. <laughs> Wonderful. Now, on uh, this object, I have this other line right here that I drew. It's actually, you know, connecting to here. I'm going to take this and trim here and trim that away and i should it should have closed that vector up for me nice and then i can take this one and move it into place up here okay wonderful now i could if i want to fill in this space it would probably be ideal if i did that uh i could uh you know fix those vectors uh, you know, you want to fill it in as properly as we can. We can go into node editing mode and cut the vector right here. Uh, let's see which one's my top line. Which one? Was that my top line or my curve? That was my curve. So that one stays there. We'll pull that out there and pull this up here. And pull that straight out. Probably don't need to go that far because that's such a small space. It'll it'll fill in with wood. Uh, and I want to join these two together with a small curve. Okay. So now I have this vector right here. Let's get it back pink again. Uh, that kind of follows that space, that fits that space. Wonderful. Okay. You're like, oh my God, what all did he just do? Holy shit, Laney. It was easy to begin with, but man, excuse my language there, Michael. Don't repeat what I just said. Um, but uh, all I had to do, guys, is we drew a shape that we want, you know, how we want our little things to kind of twist around. Uh, we haven't done the, the model shaping of them. We just, well, there's a rectangle so far. We ended up using the array tool to make seven copies equal distance across. And then whatever was overhanging here, we needed to move up there. So we had to kind of redraw this lower vector, you know, so it finished off here. And then that overhang, we had to close it up as a vector and move it up to here, right? So that's all we've done to this point. Now, okay, now I have some options. I can use the create shape tool. I can select all these vectors. Let's go into the 3D view so you can see what it looks like and let's turn off our this model here. <clears throat> okay. I can go into with these selected, I can go into the create shape tool. 
and I could create a curved profile. I could create a nice little smooth profile that kind of tapers off at the bottom. We might try that one too. That's a new one for 10.5, but let's do a curved profile. And I want, you know, a good, I'm going to go uh, 75 degree angle. Um, base height right now, I'm going to leave it zero. Uh, no limit on this curve. And I want to add, and if I click apply, it would build up uh, all seven. of these curved shapes, right? And, you know, um, there's no base height or anything to this yet uh, and all, um, but right now it's a consistent height. There's no, there's no uh, like transition from fat to thinner, right? And so this I don't want to do. I want to be able to make this as fat as I want on this end and then kind of taper down so it gives it that illusion of a taper. Okay. And um, the uh, I'm going to reset this to get rid of that shape. And I'm going to close this tool because the great create shape tool was a great option. It was a good option. If I wanted it to be a consistent flow and stuff, fine, but I don't want that. So now I have, okay, the option of a two rail sweep where I'm sweeping between each of these two lines. Okay. Now in order to have a uh, two rail sweep, I can't have these end vectors, right? Right. And so um, if I go into node editing mode on each of these and let's get rid of this guideline so you can see what's happening. Uh, you know, we know what size these are now, you know, I mean, we know where they are and we know how to put the guidelines back if we need to. But uh, if I come over here and I, you know, uh, delete the span for each of these ends. And you can just, uh, to make things faster, if you put your mouse over a line and you hit the D key, that will delete that span, right? Put your mouse over a line, hit the D key, uh, the letter D on your keyboard, uh, it will delete that span. So you don't have to keep right clicking, uh, you know, right click, left click, you know, that kind of thing. Just move your mouse over, hit the letter D. Move your mouse over, hit the letter D, so on and so forth. Now, this one is a tricky one because there's no real span here. Okay? There's no real span here uh, where these kind of connect and stuff. You know. So what I'm going to do is as long as I cut the vector because uh you know uh this shape here and this shape here let's get back into normal selection mode when i select this it's still wrapping around there right but if i cut the vector oh back there now i gotta zoom back out and select I love how my node disappeared on me. If I cut the vector here, that will technically give me two separate lines. All right. So I will have two separate spans. Okay. Which did I cut the vector in the right place is the question of the day. No. Let's cut that one. There we go. All right, now I have two separate lines, okay? This span and that span. The short span, there's two on top of each other right here. They're kind of like right up on top of each other, so I got to be careful which one I select. Now, all right, so I've got my, my lines that I can do my two rail sweeps with and everything. Now I've got to say, okay, what the pro, what's the profile going to be? What's the profile? 
Uh, yes, uh, Crystal pointed out to me. Let's go ahead and hit the save button and save up to this point. Thanks, guys and girls. All right. So give it a minute. It's a big, that, that big uh, baluster model is uh, making it a little slow on the saving. Um, so we'll give it a second there to save. While it's saving, I'll take another sip of soda. So, you guys and girls, hopefully you're doing well. Um, we've, we've had a few questions. So, this is more a design rotary than it is a Q&A, but we'll leave it out. You guys, ask if you got questions, ask them. Don't be afraid to ask them because I can multitask. You're like, but we can't, Lanny. We need to focus on one thing at a time. But if you have questions, ask them. That's what this is for. Okay. Um, all right. So let's figure out our profile, right? Uh, our profiles and stuff. So I would, you know, uh, like I said, um, I would like it to, and I'm going to use a, um, uh, circle here, but, uh, we're going to, um, let's go a little bigger. What was my diameter? One point. What was my width? One, one, ah, uh, two point five five six divided by seven equals. Did I do that right? Two point five five six divided by seven equals. Well, oh, <laughs> 12.556 divided by 7, divided by 7. There we go. I'm sitting there going, wait a minute. I know it was 1.79 something. Um, so if I, you know, uh, with that diameter there, uh, I'm going to go into node editing mode, and I'm going to cut this in half. Okay, cut the vector here and cut it here. Okay, and I'm going to delete this lower half. So at this top part, you know, I'd like it to be real fat, and then I would like it to thin down. Uh, still going to be the same width and all, but the height is going to be a little different. Uh, and I'm actually, let's see if I can pull this arc up even more. Like that. And I'm going to get out of node editing. I don't need to be in there. Uh, now I'm going to take and hold the control key down and drag a copy over here. And this is going to be my second profile, and I want to, I want to go round like this, and then I want it to start flattening out a bit, okay? So I want it to kind of transition from this shape to this shape, and then I want to hold down the control key, drag another copy off here. Uh, from this shape to that shape, I'm going to drag this down a little bit more, you know, like that. And then from here to here on the last one, uh, I'm going to pull this up just a little bit. Okay. So I want to kind of uh, to transition and then pop back up right at the very end. Uh, up a little bit, you know, not much. Right. So those are the four profiles. You're like, four? What are you doing now, Lenny? Holy cow. Well, we can, when we do a two rail sweep, we can create different cross sections and we can have that, when it sweeps that object between those two lines, curves, or whatever, uh, it can transition from one object to the other and everything. And an example of this, um, is if I come over here and turn all the models off, which they're off, uh, and if I take this line here and I'll just pull over a little bit. Uh, don't do that. Control Z. Hold down. Hold down your control key. Ooh. Control Z. 
Control left click is a zoom. I like that. I just found that keyboard shortcut. <laughs> Control left click is a zoom. Uh, I think. Um, anyway, uh, I think that was the keyboard shortcut because I did that. Anyhow, uh, if I hold down my control key, I can drag over another line. And let's just drag a line here as an example. And let's go to the two rail sweep. And let's say that this is my two rails, right? That's my drive rails. And then this first cross section is going to go, you know, is going to start here. Now, I want you to notice what it did. It put a little red dot right there, you know, identifying that that cross section runs along here that red line. But if I come in here, let's say right about there, and I add a line and I select another cross section, you know, and I click there, that yellow dot represents that yellow dot here. So this first one's going to run from here to here. The second one's going to run from here to wherever I tell it to. Uh, let's say I choose this selection now and say right here. So that one's green and green, right? So it's going to, that yellow is going to go to here. Then it's going to transition to that all the way to, let's grab this last one and click uh, right here. Okay. And if I sweep that, right, if I sweep that across and we look at it from, what would be a good side? From the side here, let's, uh, what would be that? That would be the X. All right. You can see how it's changed that shape. It went from, you know, each of those shapes and everything, and it swept, you know, that, that look. Now, what that shows me is uh, by doing it that way here, kind of looking here, that's an ugly profile, right? So I may want to change this. I don't want it sweeping up that high. I just want a little lip there. And maybe this is a little squished right here. So I want to do a little bit. I want to change my transition uh, here a bit, just a little bit. So it was a good example, but we can transition. I could transition from, you know, uh, if this last one here was a star or, or whatever, I could, you know, um, I could transition from a square to a circle to an oval, whatever. You know, I can create multiple shapes and I can transition that that sweep along those, you know, those profiles can transition. So uh, by seeing this, which we're going to delete. And I'll delete this line. It don't belong here. But that tells me that that transition from here to here was just too drastic. It was really flat there. So I'm going to take this guy and pull him up just a little bit. A little bit more. This one was way too flat, so I'm going to pull him up just a little bit more. I want a nice kind of almost like a darn ramp, if you will. Uh, you know, I'd like a, you know, a nice, um, let's say, let's say I take my guide, I take a guideline here and I come in here and say, okay, let's change this to a 30 degree angle. Well, it doesn't do negatives. Um, let's go. Hundred and eighty is all the way around, and then uh, one. Okay, uh, a little bit too much. Let's back that off some. One thirty-seven. Oh, gotta go the other way. Not bad. Let's, there we go. You know, just a subtle transition, right? And so I can come in here and, you know, I can adjust things, uh, you know, accordingly. And uh, so it depends on, you know, how much of an angle I want. I actually, uh, I'm going to kind of go more like that. So 
So let's um, and at the very end. I want it to kind of just peak right back up above. Just kind of, you know, peak back up above. Not much, but that would be my two rail sweeps. So let's see what this looks like. Okay. Uh, let's see what this looks like. Let's get rid of that guideline and everything. So I have these different shapes uh, and stuff. And let's, before we sweep this, let's answer a couple of questions. Um, Mike Nolan says, I'm trying to make the hinge spoon rest uh, from the Vetric website, okay? The free project, the hinge spoon rest uh, on the actual dish for the spoon rest. I cannot get it to cut right. I don't know if I should use 3D modeling for that or not. Uh, Mike, um, I'm not familiar with the hinge spoon rest, but if it's, uh, you know, on the actual dish, if it's a dome or a dish, if you have a spire and everything, you can make the dome or dish uh, in a spire uh, with the create shape tool. If you have V carved desktop or pro, then you would use the clip art of the dome or dish. And they only have like 30 degree, 45 degree, 60 and 90, I believe on the domes um, and things. But I'll uh, in just a second here, I will look at that, project. I'll open up the Vetric uh, website and look at that project and then I'll tell you the best way to go. Um, could you have left the lines on the outside in the gray area and use that for the other rails? Could I have left the lines on the outside? Could I have drawn them in the outside? Could you have left the lines on the outside in the gray area Oh, the lines that kind of overlapped and use them for the rails. Yes, I could have. I could have used those for the rails and then I could trim the model to uh, a selected vector. Absolutely. Uh, and everything. So what Camaro is referring to is the way I cut this shape, you know, that was overhanging and I drug it up here uh, to here. I could have left it. Uh, just like it was, and I could create my sweeps, you know, I could have added another one of these up here and created my sweeps all the way across, and it would only show the model in those areas. It wouldn't show the models in the gray, and if I, you know, I could even trim the model using the clear area outside of selected component vectors. Um, basically, the uh we'll do it both ways uh uh steven and i'll and i'll show you i'll show you guys both ways all right let's do a let's do our first sweep so this vector and this vector here uh that's going to be our drive rail okay now it's absolutely important that our drive rails are going the same direction. So we're going to reverse this rail. Okay, we wanna sweep in the same direction. And I wanna sweep from larger to smaller, you know, this way in this direction. So my first uh, cross section here, <coughs> excuse me, that's gonna start here. Okay, so that's my red. Uh, my second cross section, I'm gonna probably go right about here. My third cross section, as it gets into this curve, right about, uh, let's see here, we'll start right about here. And then my last cross section, I'm going to do it right. Oh, right there. Okay. Thank you. All right, and so I just wanted to kind of bump back up right here at the end. 
So with that, uh, I'm going to scale the cross sections with the width. Uh, I'm going to sweep it between those two spans and I'm going to click apply. And if we look at our 3D view, It is a ramp. It is a ramp coming down and then it pops back up here a little bit, but still not, uh, it's not, it's too round. It's too round. I want, let's put it in perspective with our other model. Uh, let's, let's see here. Let's see what we need to adjust. We can't really, uh, see it very well until we see it with the in the context of with the other model. So let's turn on our component. The model we created. Okay. So first things first, I got some area to fill in here. Right. Uh, I'm popping back over this, which is fine because I'm going to be doing some smoothing and stuff, but it's, there's no life to it. It's just, it is a ramp. It's exactly how I drew it. So let's, uh, let's change this up a bit. Uh, let's kind of go from around. If we, let's take a look here at our other model. So you, you can see what we're kind of trying to Im not, you know, not duplicate, but emulate. You see how I wish I could get a good side view that wasn't, um, that wasn't cut off here, but uh, it's almost like it flattens out, like it's flatter here. You know, it's got, it's round, it's flat here. It's, you know, it's just kind of radius on both sides. There is a little bit of a flat, but that flat is more prominent right about here. Um, it is radius and there is a flat right here. It's not a complete dome like I have. It's, it's kind of flat here, but as it goes through uh, and stuff, it actually rounds off a little bit here but then it starts kind of flattening out again here. And then we have this little bump up, right? So we got to try to emulate that here. So I'm going to go into node editing and I'm going to insert a point, insert a point, And I'm going to kind of pull this down a little bit, you know, so it's more kind of like rounded over. Uh, I'll let that run quite a ways. We'll get rid of this one, this cross section. I'm only use three. Uh, as that runs down, uh, this one kind of rounds up a bit. So it's more round and that's fine to be there. Um, so that's good, you know, a transition. Uh, then it starts to flatten out again. So kind of starts flattening out again, not too flat. We don't want to jump too much, but subtly mm, let me see here uh, let's turn off this one and this one and use my down arrow key and like that and uh, you know as it uh, transition there's a very small one that um, kind of uh, 
pops back up and it's not there's not a whole lot to it okay okie dokie now on this two rail sweep here uh the one thing that i've got to be mindful of is that we saw that gap right there where it wasn't creating that's because my line's not straight right on that rail that line's not straight you know uh so i'm actually gonna drag this line to here so it's kind of straight across i'll drag that to there and uh I don't know. I'm almost thinking I want to go even kind of flatter on this one. But let's give this a shot. So I'm going to select uh, this rail and this rail. Two rails sweep. Use that as my drive rails. Make sure they're facing the, the right direction. Wonderful. They are. Uh, we're going to go from here. That's going to start there. So you click on that. This one is going to start, I'm going to say, right about here. This one is going to run, that one's going to run all the way to, let's say, right about uh, here. And then this last one is going to happen right at the very end. You're going to let me right about there. Just a small little, uh, so right about there. All right, let's give that a try. Look at our 3D view. Turn off the other model. Got to turn off the other model. I was about to say, man, that looks great, right? No, that's the other model. Can't be cheating like that. All right, that's going to be good enough. Uh, and then what I'll do is I'll do some sculpting on this. Uh, but um, so now that I have that, I could, uh, you know, array this down seven times um, the way we did before. Uh, or I could just continue, you know, two rails sweeping it all the way down. Either way. Uh, if I want the lines and those curves to be consistent, then it's better that I copy this all the way across, right? So um, the uh, width, my width there, that 1.77 and some change, which I'll get that number back in a minute. <clears throat> Let's do a array and it's still in there yay for us right thanks for vetric being so intuitive and keeping us in check all right let's copy that down okay all right now notice how the model's overhanging in the gray spot here Right, I could, I could, I could array one up, right, and do the same thing here. But let's look at it in the 3D view. 
All right, notice how it cut it off. Let's look at it this there. You see how it cut it off? It doesn't show what's on the outside of there. So I could very easily, if I wanted to, I could take this one and uh, create two rows, one column and go up in a positive direction. Delete the negative there. And uh, copy that up. And again, you know, we have our two halves. And if we wrapped, now this would look ugly if I wrapped around because there's no zero plane in there, but let's wrap it just for funs and giggles. Um, it looks like one of those, uh, what's one of those uh, cookies uh, that we, uh, it's like a breadstick type cookie, a cinnamon stick that you would get at like a 7-Eleven or something like that. Uh, that's what it looks like now. But let's actually add the other model into this. <clears throat> okay. Uh, so we got our model here. And if we wrap this up now, okay, it creates that shape. But notice how it's not tapering into here, right? Because that cylinder without these components, without these components right here, um, let me turn them off. Did I freeze it up? Hold on a second. Got to let it catch up. While it's catching up. Raymond, is this a question or a statement, bud? Uh, want to texture, want to make textured walking sticks to sell for Christmas. Having issues setting up the tapered profile uh, to take the clip art. Uh, you're, are you using the, the clip art texture? The clip art texture? Um, you would add... Make sure that texture uh, clip art, if it's, if, if it's the clip art that I'm talking about, that I'm in the clip art section, the model texture, uh, make sure it's an add uh, to the, you know, the, an add uh, combine mode. So over in the software here in the properties, make sure it's an add combine mode because it'll follow the contour of whatever's underneath it. So make sure it's at the top of the list, the textures at the top of the list, and it's being added to the component that's underneath and it'll take the texture and it'll follow the curve. If I'm hoping I understood the, what you were talking about uh, and stuff. Uh, an example of that Edward Uh, Raymond, not Edward, sorry. An example of that, Raymond, uh, would be the same way that I textured this frame. That frame, this frame, some frame. the way that I've textured this frame here in the modeling uh, components. Uh, we have a component. This component has a curve to it. It's underneath it. And the bark 
is on top and it follows that curve. It follows that curve uh, and everything. So if you're using the textured clip art, if you're, if I'm, if I'm thinking of the same place here, the textured clip art, just drag it in and it'll follow the curve or the contour, or the taper or what have you. Right. Okay. By the way, ladies and gentlemen, uh, while you're seeing this, uh, Spindle TV subscribers to the one-on-one -on -one training classes, whether you paid monthly or annually for your one-on-one -on -one training, uh, they receive two projects a month. I design two projects a month for them. Uh, this month, they're getting this deer frame uh, as a blank, and they're also getting uh, uh, the second project uh, is they're getting this uh, home sweet home sign, right? So they have two versions. So the blank one, they can create whatever they want. And this one is a home sweet home sign. Uh, they get two project downloads each month. These are the July projects that were created for the subscribers. So uh, that uh, subscribe to the Spindle TV one-on-one -on -one training. Consider that because uh, the projects I make for you guys are cool. All right, let's uh, close that and exit out of this and get back to where we were. But hopefully, Raymond, that's what you were talking about. You couldn't get the texture to follow the taper, the contour. It needs to be an add combine mode. And it needs to be on top of any in the list. It needs to be on the top. All right. Now, what we were talking about here, uh, uh, as I, I turn off these flutes and tubes uh, and everything, let me turn them off. One more. All right, there is one more on the list somewhere. Right there it is. I knew it was hiding from me. This area here that those that shape is getting wrapped around, it's the same consistent thickness all the way around, right? Uh, it's not thinning out at all. It's the same core. So those shapes are going around the same. They're not tapering in. Now, I could thin this up. Uh, by doing exactly what uh, I think it was Robert Casa. Uh, I, you know, I could create the taper in here. I could reduce, uh, bring this line down and kind of reduce that so that my objects here, you know, flow correctly, uh, you know, and things. Um, or I could do what's called tilt and fade. Okay. So if we look at... Um, if we look at this object here, let's go back into our 3D view. If it goes back into the 3D view. Come on, show me some love. Let me unwrap this. Okay. I could, I could reduce this base height, you know, and I could taper it down in the profile itself, you know, by changing the profile so that those parts flow. And let me just throw one on here for right now. Um, 
okay? So the parts flow into this, right? I could reduce, the, or I could taper this by that much, you know, whatever that overhang is there. So it flows in uh, and stuff. Or I could fade into that. And uh, or, or you know tilt into it either one and let's let's do a fade first so you can see what that looks like. So if I select this component, okay, and I click on this blue square right here, that's going to give me the properties of this component. And if I turn on the fade. The fade uh, is like, you know, where it blends from one component to another. And where we click first is the area we want to keep. And where we click second is the area we want to fade. Okay. And so if I click on my set button here, my mouse turns into this anchor. And the first place that I click is the place that I want to keep. The second place I click is the place I want to fade. And by default, it goes into a 50% fade. All right. And so let me, uh, let me pull this over and let me, um, tilt this a little bit so you can see it. Not that way you goofball. Work with me. Let me tilt it a little bit more. Oops, don't move the model. Hold on a second. I moved the model. Control Z is your best friend. Control Z. Okay. Uh, let me tilt this a little bit more and drag this up so we can see the top of it. So it will fade into that shape. Now, if I change my percentage here, my fade percentage and everything, that will determine how much of the fading occurs, uh, you know, on the shape. And so, you know, 25% doesn't get me where I want to be. So let's go... 30%. No, let's go 38%. All right, so I'm going to go 50 was probably a good number, but let's go 45. Yep, 50 is going to be the, the number. I'm going to fade right below that. Okay. And, uh, you know, fade right into that, that model. All right. Now, I've got this crease here. I'm going to leave that as a design element, even though that's because I pulled that on that first profile here. Uh, this first profile. I pulled that V down and I created that crease right there. You see that crease? You know, I created that. Uh, so, um, uh, you know, that was me that did that. So, on each of these models, I'm going to turn them on one by one. And I'm working with a very high resolution and now I have multiple models. Uh, and things, and uh, you know, 
So it's really building up, you know, that CPU usage. You guys and girls uh, still with me? Let me know all that wonderful stuff. We're going to be wrapping up here in a moment. Uh, we got to still add our flour and then we'll be done. All right. So now what I want to do with these, uh, these individual components, I'm okay with this, uh, this shape here, but I got to fade, uh, you know, um, all of these, not just the one, right? So I'm going to undo the component fade on that, um, that component. Uh, let me come back into the properties here. I'm going to turn the fading off on this component so it's just, just like all the rest. <clears throat> okay. And um, on my shape height, overall shape height, I'm going to reduce the overall shape height just a little bit uh, for these back pieces. I'm going to end up creating a little bit bigger bead right there. But I'm going to reduce this down to 0.875. All over the whole thing. Uh, not the whole, <laughs> Don't do that, Laney. Uh, control Z. Undo. I'm going to do them all at the same time. So I'm going to bake these, uh, these shapes here. I'm going to bake them together. Uh, these seven components here. <clears throat> okay. I'm going to take, um, all of these components here and I'm going to turn this one off. That's my underground, uh, my under part. And I'm going to bake these visible components together. I'm going to turn my zero plane off too. I don't want that on right now. Okay. I want just these visible models right here and I'm going to bake them together as one item. Okay. Now, when I'm working with these, I'm working with them as a whole. Okay. So when I come into the properties here, I can go ahead and reduce the overall height to that 0.875 that I want. Okay. And then I don't like doing the fading in here because I have to work in the 2D view when I'm in here. I want to do it in the 3D view. So I'm going to open up the properties by clicking on that blue square here. And just like before, uh, let me get back into a normal Z view here. I'm going to turn the fading on. I'm going to click set. I'm going to click here first. And here, second, that 50% fading to get it to fade. Okay. Then I'm going to turn my underlayment, you know, my actual spindle shape back on. Ah. Don't move your model around when you're dragging your mouse around. Let go of that left mouse button. So we're going to go undo, control Z to undo my move. There we go. Uh, yeah, when you're dragging that component around, don't uh, don't be dragging, don't be messing around. All right, now on this component, if we look carefully here, we have this little bit of an oddity right here, right? this oddity right here. And if we turn this around and drag this up, we can see that it's a very thin, let's uh, tilt it a little bit more and drag it up. 
it's a very thin kind of piece of wood, almost like, you know, the old shape of uh, this object here. And that's because the object is being added to the existing component, you know, that first, uh, you know, profile. And I need to really kind of merge it, merge it into it, right? So I need to change this component from an add mode to a merge to get rid of this oddity right here. Okay. And now I've merged it and now it's down inside of the, the, you know, the, the, the model that's underneath. So I got to give it a little bit of base height. I got to pick it back up. I'm blending and merging them together, but now I got to kind of, you know, pick it back up uh, to the height that I need. Right. So let me zoom out so you can see this. All right. So I got to give it the base height and I got to pick it up. You know, uh, to where, you know, it, uh, it blends. Now, by doing that, my fade, because I'm merging now, right? My fade is actually merging into here instead of up here. So it's a lot of kind of a little back and forth. Uh, I'm going to reduce my fading to pick this edge up here. Okay. So let's reduce it some more. Okay. And let's look at where I am over here, just right below that curve. I'm kind of happy with the way that looks. Uh, over here, I'm higher than this bead. Uh, I'm okay with that because I'm going to change this bead and I'm going to raise it up to this level. I'm going to change this bead and make it a little bit bigger and have it stand up a little taller. Uh, by just adding some straight width to it. Uh, I'm not gonna make the bead bigger, I'm gonna make it taller. So how I'm gonna do that is here, on this bead right here, I'm gonna go into node editing, and uh, I gotta cut the vector right here. and cut the vector there. I'm gonna delete that span. This guy here, this bead right here, I'm gonna cut him back here and delete this span. And then I'm gonna take this, just this, not this bottom one, just this top one. And I'm literally going to select all those nodes and I'm going to use my uh, up arrow on my keyboard. And I'm just raising this up. That's probably good. Um, I'm guesstimating right now. And I'm going to join these two with a straight line. Join with a straight line, right? And this is ridiculous here, right? I don't, my bit's not going to be able to get in there to kind of create that shape uh, and everything. So I'm going to kind of put a fillet there. Uh, let's go with a 30 second. Um, Okay, just picking that up. Now, because I've done that, that means this component model right here, this guy, uh, don't need him. Let's close this uh, tool. Always close your tools when you have them open. 
Uh, this component here, I'm going to delete it, right? Because I'm about to recreate it. And I'm going to select my two drive rails again, this one and this one. Two rail sweep. Uh, oops. Select your rails first. Those are your drive selection rails. Select this profile and click apply. And then I'm going to put it back in the list when it gets back to my component tree list. I'm going to put it back down where it belongs underneath this other component. Okay. And so if I look in here, okay. I've raised this up, right? But not nearly enough to get above that. I'm just, oh gosh, so little, right? So I don't care. We're going to do it one more time. Let's get it right. So on this component here, I'm going to delete it back over here. I'm going to go into node editing, hit the letter N on my keyboard. And uh, I don't need to, you know, uh, change any of this or anything. All I need to do is cut the vector right here. Just cut the vector right there. Okay. And then I can select these nodes right here. And I'm going to pump that up a little bit more. Good enough. I think that's good enough. It looks like I moved a lot, but it's not. It's actually not in much. And then I'm going to join that back together with a straight line. Okay. I'm not going to change my fillet and everything. I'm fine with that. And then one more time for the last time. We're going to... Go to the two rail sweep tool. Use the drive rails, select this. Let me grab this tab, hold on a second. Stretch my tab back out, I shortened it up. There we go. Uh, my selection and uh, click apply one more time. All right, a little bit of back and forth to get your design right. It's 946. We're about to wrap this up. We got to just add our flowers uh, and uh, we're recreating this. I don't see. Let's see here. Did I miss some questions? Uh, thank you. I actually was trying to get the tool path to work for me and for machining. Uh, could you have left the lines on the outside in the gray area? Actually, just uh, create the shape. I'm trying to make a hinge spoon. I got to come back to the hinge spoon as we wrap up, as we say our goodbyes. Um, okay, let's, uh, in our component tree. <clears throat> let's move our uh, component down below our little twisty beads. Okay, and okay, perfect. I'm happy with that. Okay, all right, so now let's wrap this up. Okay, let it regenerate. Still probably would look better as a taper here. 
because it is, you know, and a little bit more twist to it. But uh, you guys get the general idea. Um, let it regenerate. It's got a, it's not, and it's all, it's, it's, it looks a little rough right here, but let it regenerate. Uh, one, two, three. Now. Right? Now. And now. And now. Isn't that how it works? And there we go. All right. So uh, could probably make those look a little sexier than that twist and all, but we're good. We're, we're getting there. Uh, could change the profiles, make them look a little flatter instead of so round. You know, there's a lot of things that we can do. This is just a kind of a recreation. It wasn't supposed to be 100% exact. Uh, doing the best that I can. Work with me, folks. Work with me. All right, now let's add our plants, our little leaf down here at the bottom. And I uh, can't believe how many people are uh, texting and calling me. Um, it's late at night. Uh, I mean, I always get calls late at night, but never on a Tuesday night. They know I'm working here, teaching you guys and girls. All right, we're going to use this um, uh, acanthus uh, vertical uh, floral design right here. Uh, we're going to drag and drop that onto our board. Acanthus, acanthus, acanthus. And by the way, uh, Stephen and Crystal, your, uh, your tower, right? That tower model, that is a two rail sweep all day long. Draw that profile of the, 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 the fat part of the base, the, the part, that goes around uh, like the railing and then the tower and everything and sweep it. Right. Uh, and it's the same thing. And we're going to talk about that when we work together on it, but you know, just so, to give you some reference. All right. So um, oh, I shouldn't have done it that way. I'm going to ro rotate this 90 degrees. I'm not going to freehand rotate it. So let me undo that. I'm going to hit the number nine key on my keyboard. twice to rotate it 90 degrees one more time nine there we go all right i'm gonna widen this up quite wide here and i'm gonna bring it down right on the edge here now my overall my overall uh, height here was 12.556. So on this height here for this uh, uh, acanthus, I want to uh, divide that by two because I want two of them side by side. So on my height here, I'm going to go uh, 12.556 divided by two and hit the equal sign on the keyboard. <clears throat> okay, and click apply. Okay, and I'm going to stretch this out to probably, I think, where my curve raises up right about here. And if I want to be specific, I can uh, drag a guideline, right, snap it to there. And then I want it to wrap down below this, so snap it to there. And then that gives me my guidelines uh, where this thing should be. So let's bring this down a little bit. Okay. And over here, um, -ba 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 -ba. let's go up a little. Cool. And let's hold down the control key and duplicate this. <clears throat> All right. Now, 
Actually, I'm not going to do it that way. I'm not going to duplicate. I want an equal distance, right? I want it the same distance. So I'm going to let me get this uh, right where I want it. Uh, I'm going to drag this down to here. And I'm going to use my arrow keys on the keyboard. And I'm going to bump it right, right on that edge, just like that. Okay. Now I'm going to mirror this. Uh, I'm going to flip it about the job center uh, and uh, I want to create a mirrored copy and I'm going to flip it vertically. Okay. Cool beans. Now these are, ad they should be added, add combined mode, add combined mode. So they follow the curve of that curve. So if we look at our 3D view, we want to follow that curve. Okay. So it looks like it's wrapping around that curve. All right. So again, uh, I'm not totally stoked about the, uh, the flutes. I think they could be cooler looking somehow, you know, change the profile a bit. Uh, you know, Still not, you know, they're kind of still tubular to me. Change them a bit, you know, and all, and I'd be happy with this. But we get the idea. Right? So um, let it regenerate. Now, the one thing this is missing is the big bead at the bottom that these flowers went into. I didn't create that bead, right? Uh, the other model had it. Uh, but, um, you know, we've, uh, let's rotate this a little bit. <clears throat> Let it regenerate. And then. Let it regenerate so we can kind of do a little bit of comparison. Now, it's a big model. All right, so uh, this is kind of a comparison. Uh, we've got our our uh, part here. And, of course, as we rotate it around, um, let it regenerate one more time, and then we won't do that again. And then we're going to turn this model off and turn on our other model so you can, you know, this was our reference image. So, come on. Get happy. There we go. All right. So, we had our floral design, and then it went into the flute. Again, I'm not happy with the flutes. Uh, I, think, I think we could taper those, uh, make them a little flatter, make them a little twisted a little bit more, and all that good stuff. But for a first uh, go around without, uh, you know, really any uh, forethought, let's turn off our two flowers. Let's turn off our uh, little flutes. Let's turn off our actual base model. And then we will turn on our, let it, you can do it. You can do it. <laughs> All right. Then we'll turn on our, our original model by design and our zero plane, which I didn't have the zero plane on in the other one, but that's okay. All right. Hey, Crisscross Crafts, thanks for jumping in. Uh, let it generate. Okay, and let's turn our zero plane on. The zero plane is our material um, that's kind of, it's our a little bit of our core. Uh, it's it's the middle of our part, you know, to uh, fill in the side. So let it re, let this regenerate. Okay. 
right now we're seeing all the triangular edges of the uh, um, cross sections and things. And so this, this was the original, this was our, you know, our reference, right? So uh, this one has, uh, you know, a nice big decorative bead, like the lettuce is growing out of that top of that pot. So ours uh, didn't. And if ours did, we probably could have, you know, it probably made it look a little bit better. Uh, it had, uh, you know, more of a rounded bead here. Um, on the front, these kind of curve a little bit more, and that's a smoothing effect. Uh, and again, not only do those shapes are fat here, uh, what I've just noticed now is they actually taper inward. So they're actually skinnier. It looks like here, let me, uh, unwrap this. No, they're not just by being flatter. Boy, they sure have that illusion of, uh, being skinnier up there, but a little bit more of a twist. So maybe a little bit more of an angle, but that's our reference. But we were able to take, you know, that reference and, and draw a profile and kind of create a profile and create, you know, something to sweep along our rails uh, and our two rail sweep and generate, you know, a pretty decent, uh, you know, likeness of it uh, and things. Uh, so, you know, this was uh, the original here, and um, once again, unwrapped. That was our component, our baked uh, flutes, and then our two florals, and that's our design there. So we didn't have uh, the big bead at the bottom, you know, so it looked like those flowers were coming in. They kind of just dead in there and it's really not a good transition on the bottom. Uh, the upper transition is fine, but I'm just not happy with the shape. Maybe a little bit more twist, maybe a little bit more twist where they lean over a little bit more, uh, would give it a much cooler effect and give it that illusion of being thinner, uh, and stuff. But Hey, uh, we just, uh, you know, spent the last three hours, two hours and 45 minutes, 47 minutes, Creating this so you could see as far as drawing, trimming, node editing, um, you know, uh, working with uh, different components and uh, tilt and tilt and fade, you know, or fading and stuff. So hopefully some of these things you picked out of this uh, and, uh, you know, you got an answer. Now, I'm going to say my goodbyes as I am uh, pulling up the Vetric website, uh, vetric.com. And I'm assuming that that um, spoon project is in the free projects, uh, the monthly projects uh, and everything. So let's see here. That's probably going to fall under support. Training videos, program updates, educational sign-up, partners, contact us. I'm going to log in, Metric Community, free projects. And uh, let's go to uh, monthly projects. Is that where it falls under, the monthly projects? Let's see here. Is it under the monthly projects? Uh, who was that that asked me about the spoon? Michael Nolan. The hinged spoon. Is that in the free project gallery? Um, the hinged spoon. I wonder if I can search. Uh, it doesn't have a search term. So, uh, by the way, guys, there's a ton of very, very cool free projects uh, that you can download and carve from Vetric. They put out a project each month, right? They put a project each month. Uh, and uh, there's some, you know, cool projects. The hinged spoon. Hinged spoon rest. Hinged spoon rest? Is that the one you're talking about? That's the only hinged spoon I see. 
All right. So let me see what his question was again. Um, all right. Hinge spoon rest. Let's see what he said. Uh, Michael, just a recap says I was trying to make the hinge spoon rest for the Vetric website from the Vetric website on the actual dish for the spoon rest right here. Uh, I cannot get it to cut right. Uh, I don't know if I should use uh, 3D modeling for that or not. Well, um, yeah, that would be a dome and a dish, uh, and it's a square block. You draw. You would have this, if you were 3D modeling this from scratch, you would draw out this shape, uh, and it would be a dish uh, shape in here. So, uh, and here, just for kicks and giggles, let's go... Um, here, stand by. All right, download the project file. Now, when you download a project, right, uh, it comes as a zip file. So this is a good little lesson for you guys that's never used this stuff. Uh, it comes as a zip file. Uh, you want to extract that file. Here, let's make this a little bigger. Let's move Michael's comment for a minute. Uh, extract the file. Uh, let me come over here and hit save on uh, this Aspire project. File, save. <clears throat> let it save. See if I can do this in less than nine minutes, eight minutes. I'm going to wrap this up at three hours. Come on, write the component and save it, man. That big, uh, that big, I'm using a high resolution, but the, uh, the other spindle, the original one is a, is a big file, big, big file. Uh, Mike, you need a roughing toolpath and a finishing toolpath. I just uh, trying to machine it and can't get the toolpath right for the Spoon Express itself. Uh, I'm just getting into the 2D modeling, 3D modeling, two well 2D design, but 3D modeling. Come on now, Patrick. Finish saving. All right, so uh, let's go into. You done right in that component. All right, we're going to open up another Aspire. Dum, da -dum, dum, dum. My evaluation version is expiring. Let's see here. Create a new file. Actually, uh, idiot, uh, open a new file, open an existing file, uh, downloads, <clears throat> all right, so. Um, looking at this, there's absolutely no 3D models in here. This is all a 2D cut. Uh, so, uh, Michael that created this, um, Michael White, Michael Tyler, Michael Tyler. Uh, he's got this as a pocket cut. So let's turn off these tool paths here. And, uh, so he's got the 
pocket cut here and profile inside the spoon fluting over the edge that's that fluting down cut that's that drilling operation that's that so if we looked at this and preview uh just this tool path right it's very basic right preview the visible tool path it's a very basic pocket cut and then a uh a profile cut with a rounding bit, right? That's all he did there, right? Well, let's do one better. And I'm just going to, for kicks and giggles, I'm going to use this shape uh, as a reference, okay? Um, if we were doing this uh, in Aspire and we were creating the model of it, um, we would come here on this outside profile. Don't even need that inside one. We, would, we could use a tool like the, uh, let's go large screen here uh, and zoom into this. We could use a tool like the create shape tool here. Uh, and uh, we actually have uh, some cool options here, but what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna do a curved profile and we're going to go a full 90 degree curve, but we're gonna limit that curve to a certain height, right? So instead of a no limit dome or dish in this case, cause we're gonna subtract instead of add, we're gonna limit it where it flattens off after a certain height, right? So I'm gonna go a limit to uh, this to a quarter of an inch, not too many decimal points. And we're gonna click on, so let's do a split view so we can see that, let's close this here let's uh close this but we're back at a blank split view here there we go all right so uh 90 degree curved uh profile uh limit to height we're going to limit to a quarter of an inch that means as it comes down a quarter of an inch then it's going to flatten out right we might go three eighths but a quarter is right good for right now we're going to subtract subtract and we're going to click apply Okay, that's going to create that curve and flat. Now it's hard to see right here. So we're going to add a zero plane so you can see it. So we're going to come in here and uh, click on close. And I'm going to drag and drop this zero plane or not drag and drop really. I'm going to double click on it, add the zero plane in there. So you can see that uh, profile and I need the zero plane here and I need that, uh, I need to smooth out that edge, right? That edge is kind of rough, rough. Uh, let's first of all, look at our material model and our shape. It is at the top, so that's good. The, sh the, the model's position in the material is at the top, but um, it's a little rough, like it's not, you know, it's kind of gritty. Uh, and, and things up here. So I want to smooth that out a bit. So I'm going to take these two components and smooth them out. And turn it up a little bit. A little bit more. Okay, and so we've created that uh, that dish there, and then of course you know this thing is it it curves up here at this end too, and this is where the spoon you know comes out. So let's uh, draw a rectangle. Uh, let's see, we'll do this. And we'll do this. Looks uh, looks about the same size on both sides. Um, now we have a choice, right? Uh, we can, uh, this of course, we're gonna come up beyond that curve, right? Right at the bottom here where that line is on the bottom of the spoon there. We're gonna come there and we're gonna be profile cutting this out right? We're going to be profile cutting this out to create that, you know, that, that squared hinge, um, and everything. 
and uh, uh, the but in this case, what I'm going to do just for visual purposes and all, uh, I'm going to select my model here. I'm going to select this rectangle, and I'm going to come in to right here and clear the area outside the vector. Get rid of it, basically. Okay. So that'll clear the area out of the selected vector. Did it? Oh, he first uh, select your um, uh, the the actual model that we want to do. We got to bake them together. Sorry, sorry, man. I'm sorry. Okay, so let's uh, bake that together. Okay, now when I baked it together, look what it did. It baked it in a uh, add mode, right? I need to take that bake component and, um, you know, it, uh, I need to reverse it. So it's that subtract again, right? And it's not a subtract this time. When it baked, it baked it in an add, or it baked it as subtracted, but it puffed it up. So I had to reverse it and make it an add. So now I'm adding it to my piece of wood. And now on that uh, baked component uh, with this vector selected, I can clear the area of the selected component outside of that selected vector. You know, uh, that would, uh, you know, uh, flatten it off. And then, of course, my profile cut. Let's do a really quick toolpath, and then we'll call it a day. Um, yes, Michael Nolan. So, Michael's, uh, can I do that with a dish? Uh, I don't have Aspire, just Pro. Yes, you can do that with a dish. Same way. I just created the dish by uh, using the shape tool. I created the the dish uh, and limited that dish to a height. So you could do the same thing um, in Pro. Pretty much, it'd be a thirty. You you would yours would be a thirty degree dish, and then you would change the height. But yes, you could do that. All right, real quick, um, and then we'll call it a day. 3D finish cut. Uh, I'm going to use the model as the boundary. Uh, no, no model offset. Uh, let's use a eighth inch tapered ball nose for right now. Uh, raster cut it, calculate, all right, let's stop that, uh, turn off the, uh, let's close this and turn off the zero plane, we don't want that being calculated as part of the model, okay? Uh, so one more time, model is the boundary, calculate. Uh, let's see here, Michael Nolan, uh, I do half an inch uh, ball nose. I'm just getting to the model. Uh, oops, sorry, Mike, I saw the picture and thought the spoon outline was 3D. Ignore me. Um, okay. You guys are just talking amongst yourselves. Uh, so on that uh, project here, and then let me do a quick profile cut. Cutting all the way through the material, quarter inch end mill on the outside of the line, calculate, preview. 
and then of course you would hinge it up right and you could do the same thing uh you could do the same thing with uh as a dish or these guys uh michael just created this in vcar pro right uh he created this in vcar pro this is for pro there is no 3d modeling in here whatsoever uh it's a drilling tool path a pocket tool path profile tool path a fluting tool path and a profile tool path right this there's nothing 3d about this so this is a pro project all day long without the dish all right so if we look at the tool paths that were created by michael tyler you know for you that come with the design not the 3d finish one but just those tool paths there uh if we reset that preview and preview the visible tool pass there's drilling operation pocket cut he's using a ball nose profile ball nose fluting tool path to create this little ramp here another profile cut to cut the shape out and she these shapes out and then you get rid of your waist uh, oh, he's got tabs in there, doesn't he? Yeah, he's got tabs in there. But, you know, uh, that's the part, right? So you don't need a spire. You don't need uh, the uh, 3D model software. You don't need to create a dish. It's already there. The You know, the tool paths are there, right? All you have to do is calculate the tool paths to fit your needs and the bit that you're using and everything and your speeds and feeds and all and run the project. You don't have to reinvent the wheel, right? The project's already there with all the tool paths and everything. You know, it's it's been created for you. Uh, so you can just cut it out. But if you want to create it and you want to try to recreate it in, in, in Pro and you don't have, and you don't want to do it as a pocket tool path, you want to try it as a dish uh, and things like that, go for it, right? And then Aspire, you would do it the way I did it. And, uh, you know, it would be a 3D finish cut if you wanted to do it as a model, right? But how Michael has it here, uh, you know, as the profile and pocket cuts with the different bits, he's using a quarter inch up cut spiral, a half inch ball nose, uh, and um, that's it. Those two bits are doing that whole project. I don't know why we'd want to... Uh, I don't, I don't know why we would want to recreate that unless you just wanted to. Uh, I mean, but it's all there, right? You just need the quarter inch end mill and the ball nose, half inch ball nose, and the cuts, you know, would be created. The, the tool pass are here, right? All right, everybody. Well, hopefully you enjoyed this and uh, got some, you know, lessons out of this and, uh, and everything with the uh, different projects and stuff. Uh, and thanks for hanging out with me for this long, three hours and seven minutes until next time. I'll see you soon. Uh, and as I say my goodbyes, let me make sure I didn't miss anything. All right. And you're welcome, Harvey and everybody else that said, thank you. Hey, if you like the video and all, uh, give a thumbs up on the video. Uh, it really helps, you know, click that thumbs up button. If you're not subscribed and you enjoyed this, uh, tonight subscribe, right? All right. Until next time, guys. Have a great day.